Okay, uh, so I'm sharing my slide. So, Salam Alaikum and uh, uh, good morning to all of you. So, uh, today we will uh, discuss more detail on two various forms of floating structures, right? So, today's lecture uh, for each of the form, there is a short uh, uh, animation or explanation videos for each of the structure so after i will uh, discuss uh, the uh, structures what is this how it is being installed or fabricate and what are the issues and what are the main design criteria right which is floating uh, uh, spar semi sub plp uh, maybe these three we can discuss today and FPSO uh, and probably uh, substructure, subsurface structure we may discuss tomorrow, right? So uh, just before uh, we can move uh, to the today's discussion, I will just recap what we have discussed last week, right? In our last week discussion, <coughs> so. Uh, we started with the in, first the uh, introduction to the oil and gas uh, business in offshore structures, right? Where uh, we say that the overall life cycle of the oil and gas business is starting from the uh, appraisal and acquisition of the field, and then um, from the discovery, right, uh, to the appraisal of the field where uh, we have to do the estimation of the and uh, economy of the product uh, which is for the business purposes and as we have discussed there are uh, three basically um, most important stakeholders or the expertise which is economics uh, and feasibility experts which is like the people from economy and finance because uh, as uh, we have discussed that the oil and gas business or these kind of mega business <coughs> so there are a lot of uh, predictions in taking decisions and this prediction or forecasting or model have been used right for the uh, feasibility because uh, these uh, projects particularly in offshore region and when we are going to the deep water so they are highly capital projects meaning to say the capex is also very high and opex are also very high and also very high risk area so in that sense we have to uh, take the decision based on the uh, economic and feasible forecasting right uh, which is uh, incorporating the oil pricing the uh, the uh, forecasting of oil pricing and the influencing factor which are most importantly geopolitical reason right that we have discussed or the other uh, mega threats like the pandemic or the other kind of uh, natural disasters that can affect the oil economics so uh, the much huge studies are being needed the second most important which is the uh, beginning right are uh, the geoscience and the geo modeling right where we have to study the uh, uh, the conditions or the uh, uh, the formation of the ground uh, where the uh, expected deposits are there right we have to study right again <clears throat> because uh, before we will design the structure which is most important thing uh, five kilo one kilometer or five kilometer below the uh, uh, sea level or below the surface level at the sea bottom what type of ground is this right what is the uh, the uh, characteristics of the ground at different because we are not only uh, bothering about the uh, 
quantity of oil and gas but again the nature right because maybe a huge quantity is there but pumping based on the current technology <coughs> pumping of such oil would be very very uh, difficult or uh, second thing the uh, there are the limitations of the existing technologies which can scan which can estimate the uh, actual or uh, close to actual characteristics of the reservoir and the uh, uh, the reservoir uh, geo techniques or uh, geo science or geo characteristics right so again as i said uh, last week right although there are various techniques like the initial techniques uh, before we go to the exploratory well we have to do the good mat ocean study <clears throat> where we do the study of the ocean characteristics and the uh, geophysical and geoscientific studies right uh, with the, without e even uh, doing any uh, drilling so which is seismic in general science uh, right so seismic surveys so again <clears throat> uh, it is not that uh, uh, the the uh, technology or the device which is sending the waves and we are collecting the waves so that uh, the most advanced uh, for type of the device if we, we are using so that uh, will give the correct answer no right so whatever the device is receiving right the because it is the traveling of the waves right so the and uh, the waves are being traveled at different zone and refracting back from a uh, different depth or different locations right so the wave characteristics returning or uh, wave characteristics so understanding of that wave characteristic is most important thing and we need the good expertise and because of this huge amount of big data right which we will be receiving through the seismic survey so uh, it also depend the interpretation of the data right uh, maybe <clears throat> uh, we can get huge amount of oil but uh, the interpretation is not rightly done so we cannot make the right uh, feasibility right because if in a deep water field as we say deep water field only it will be feasible we when we can get the very high yield right so in that sense if uh, we if somebody could not do the right right the potentials of pumping of oil and gas was very high <clears throat> but the, someone he interpreted uh, uh, not very accurately so he can estimate about 50% potential of the field right so the business plan and technology development will be based on for that so again that the full opportunities of the business could not be tapped because of the uh, not very accurate interpretation or other way around somebody has as over estimated right the potential of the uh, field is for example uh, for a business a right uh, let's say uh, overall business of for example uh, 5 billion dollar per year uh, business for next 10 years right or uh, so uh, for that it is showing for example the uh, oil and gas operator of the players very very encouraging right uh, outlook that and the players can made a very huge investment for developing the field but when they started right as we have seen this will take three to five years for the field development right so maybe when the full-fledged development of the field is started and uh, the production is started 
so uh, uh, by all mean right what was predicted so they cannot get more than 60 or 70 percent of the daily oil pumping so that might become a liability right because your business plan your investment right uh, all have been made based on the estimation right and on that estimation so again every company we have to invest that the break even time will be three years or five years right maximum and then it will be a profit time right uh, be because uh, all the oil and gas field as the other days i have uh, told you that uh, the consortium of the uh, oil and gas uh, operators like i have given the example of of malaysian oil field right although all oil, oil fields uh, or all the fields belongs to the nation of Mal malaysian nation which is the government of malaysia on behalf of the people of malaysia right so every block which is being leased out for example to the group of operator as i say uh, like petronas uh, go with uh, shell or shalom merger two three players and sometimes because these three uh, uh, four operators so they do investment right so they will so the, it does not mean even for survey and everything the government will pay the money no uh, they will go <coughs> and they will start right so if the, some uh, piece of uh, land is given to them so they will do the seismic survey and whatever five million dollar or ten million dollar or two million dollar initial investment so they will make and they, because uh, there are many survey uh, the outcome is that okay so this two million or five million dollar is peanut initial investment right so that will give an indication that uh, the uh, 20 years life there will be a business of 50 billion or 500 billion dollar right so that's why they have and based on the expectation of the business so the uh, field development from uh, seismic survey to the next uh, exploratory survey and appraisal so as they will go further and further, so more investment will be needed and return will start because once the field will be fully developed, so when production, you will start selling the oil into the international market. So then return will start, right? So meaning to say uh, for a particular site, so they have invested in first five years from their own pocket right including paying salaries and all so they have uh, invested one billion dollar right so uh, they will start uh, uh, getting right money when once production will start it right so maybe if 500 uh, million dollar or uh, uh, 600 million uh, one billion dollar business is going on right when production is started right so this one billion dollar is not the whole sum because again uh, 70 80 percent will be uh, uh, expanding right so they will be spending uh, 70 percent 80 percent including the operational cost including the uh, premium taxes and royalty paying to the government so 10 to 15 percent right mm -hmm. uh, or 20 percent uh, is being the net profit which is uh, going towards the break even so roughly if from the day of production so 20 percent uh, of the 1 billion dollar investment is coming right so which is like uh, 1 billion dollar business so it will take uh, let's say five years to break even right because uh, this profit right uh, which is coming to the company's pocket uh, 
uh, that is the net profit uh, which is not being after paying overhead operational cost government premium and something so it is residing into the company assets right and uh, so this uh, in 5 years time uh, which it will be so the 1 billion dollar what company invested for the development of the field so in 5 years time so this money has returned back and from the 6th year so that uh, profit which is being uh, residing into the company pocket right reserve account so that might be reducing or that might be further increasing depending on to the uh, geopolitical condition and oil pricing at that time right so that's why uh, it is pretty important right uh, because uh, considering all particularly oh, under estimation is something okay you made your investment uh, based on the under estimation but uh, once you went over there so you can further expand right so that might not give a big loss because you made uh, your investment based on that right and you made your break even period uh, which is 3 years or 5 years based on that investment but because you invested lower your estimation was on lower side so that is not a big issue to the company big issue in that sense that uh, the issue in that sense you cannot take out the full economic benefit at that time of um, the earlier studies but that can be further extended so that will still in your hand but over estimation and much over is estimation can cause the uh, big uh, denting to the company right uh, just as i told you you made your investment of 1 million uh, 1 billion us dollar and once you on the fifth year or third year you started your production so uh, as per uh, your economic analysis and feasibility so you anticipated a business of 1 billion dollar right uh, at every year 1 billion dollar every year and uh, your opex and taxes and premium payment so you are expecting that uh, 20% which is 200 million dollar will be your net saving right and in 5 years time uh, you will be uh, having break even of your initial investment right so but uh, when you started your production so instead of 1 billion dollar business uh, so you can pump only for 700 million dollar for 700 million dollar even your net profit instead of 20% has come down to 10% or 15% let's say 100 million dollar so your break even time will move to 10 years and in between 10 years any uh, uh, mishap happened so it may extend to 15 year so that might ended up the failure of the project right and the company financial strength is not if two three such field so the company can be bankrupted right or the company has to cut short right to 30% that will go against the reputation of the company so that is why this uh, uh, geological and geoscience study which is one third is very very important for the uh, field uh, development and whenever we are talking offshore and deep water so it is much more sensitive and much more important right so having the right expertise and after that the third piece which we have discussed is engineering where the type of structures the technologies which is engine all the engineering structures including the pumping infrastructures uh, the export which is pipeline as we have seen the 
uh, uh, again, uh, where will be the wellhead location, which is underwater, which is wet tree, or the wellhead will be uh, on the uh, surface, which is dry tree. So uh, we will start this uh, strategy with that again, feasibility, then what type of structure, what is the size of structure. Uh, so uh, based on that, uh, if it is deeper water, so we have a variety of structures like SPAR, SEMISUB, TLP. So we have to select, right? Uh, what are the, because the other day we have discussed uh, sub, there are uh, some platforms are very flexible. Some platforms are a uh, type of rigid for some activities. For example, FPSO and uh, semi submersible. Uh, so we cannot have the drilling head, right? The well head at the surface, right? Because it is not due to the some technical reason. So on FPSO, so in that FPSO will only manage uh, the subsea wed, uh, well head, right? So we will go to the all kind of <coughs> wet tree. And uh, if we are having our platform, which is FPSO based, so we will look what is the uh, well layout. It is uh, remotely, right? So we have selected the site, but the uh, wells are scattered, right? Not uh, uh, converge at one or two single place because of the reservoir uh, conditions. So the scattered well. So in that case, so it will be, it might be uh, feasible. That's why we have to look the condition. And uh, the advantage, as we say, but the other advantage where uh, the other platforms are very rigid for that is the storage because FPSO can have the huge storage. Some of the FPSO today, because uh, some of them, they were converted like shuttle tanker, which were used for uh, uh, transporting of oil to the longer distance. So they are on 2 million barrel of oil or 3 million barrel of oil storage capacity. So the FPSO can have the high, huge storage capacity. So that might be the good advantage, right? So for example, in the cases where you have, because deep water or most of the uh, field which are quite remote, right, to the uh, shoreline, and the sea bottom condition until the shoreline is uh, very critical or very rough, where handling the uh, marine pipeline <coughs> is not uh, or cannot 100% uh, serve the purpose of transporting of oil. So in that case, on the site, which is FPSO, the huge storage capacity uh, is uh, eminent and it is very, very uh, much needed. So in the, that case, our decision should go for that, right? Or uh, we can go if we have uh, the, uh, the well layout, uh, that one pocket where the wells are very closely spaced and you know, some location, uh, remote locations, they are scattered. So we can go for the a mixed uh, development, which means that uh, the platforms at which uh, we can have the dry tree, like the spar platform, right? Or tension. So we can go uh, that uh, dry tree and some processing on a spar platform, and we can uh, use FPSO for storage processing as well as uh, for uh, the remote uh, well connectivity. So these are some example, like the first deep water uh, 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 site of Malaysia, which is Kike. So it is a, a hybrid system. They, they have the FPSO and the SPAR, right? So 
the FPSO is for remote well as well as uh, the huge storage and the SPAR are for the, uh, uh, the close well and uh, for the uh, wet tree, right? So for drilling and other purposes, right? So these are uh, some feasibility and engineering we have discussed. So <clears throat> after that, uh, we have been uh, discussed the uh, hydrostatic, right? The first decision, uh, right? The first design decision is the stability, right? So we are uh, by the term stability because every structure uh, will be undergoing to because either the structure like this platform in my hand, this spoon, either it is uh, rigid or it is uh, flexible. So whenever we are talking the movement, the step, so stability is needed because it should stay at sight on the desired position, right? So this is the platform. So our desired is that platform, which means uh, the floor. So that should be the stable and the flat floor, right? So we can perform if floor is like this, right? Your bedroom or any building floor is like this. So it, it might be the slanting floor might be for amusement, but your office room, right? So the your hall, so it is like that. So it is not uh, the desired, right? So we need our floor like a flat floor, right? For the functionality point of view. So meaning to say, but if floor is mobile, it is continuously uh, moving like that. So again, the small movement, which can be susceptible movement. So that is fine. But if it is, so if the movement in the structure will be causing functional difficulties. So that is not uh, desired. So just now, now like on to uh, this uh, slide. So some kind of very rough sea, right? In the deep water is being shown like this kind of sea condition, right? So that mm, the wave, which are not the regular wave, right? Random wave are being shown, right? Animating onto this title slide, right? So whenever you are discussing, so uh, our purpose is that uh, under daily operating life, so the first of all, the height of the deck from this critical water condition to be such that it will not affect, right? The, the forces, as you can see, the these waves and splashing effects, right? So these are carrying huge amount of energy. So this energy should not uh, uh, cause any kind of movement onto my platform. So which can affect my operational functions, right? So how do we translate this? So there are two. One are the static effects. So static effect, the movement. So either and the uh, the structure or platform can move linearly so uh, linearly along x y z axis right so three linear translation right so that is the surge right uh, along longitudinal axis it was moving along main axis like surging sway right it is along transverse axis so it can move like that or heaving up and down, right? Because if uh, with this change of water level and this is flexible, so it can move up and down. So all these translational movement or linear movement, right? Linear along the axis. So these are the three translational degree of freedom, right? <clears throat> so. Uh, one of the requirement because uh, they are being uh, tied with flexible, which is mooring, either the taut mooring, or which is vertical move like tension leg, or mm, the taut mooring, right? The tied, right? Like uh, this tied mooring or loose mooring. So again, mm, uh, there is a static 
requirement so what is the maximum drag what is the maximum movement right in each of the uh, in each of the linear direction along x axis y axis and z axis so again depending on to the mooring system which is the connectivity of the mooring line to the sea floor as well as the riser pipeline the most important thing because otherwise uh, as we say that uh, this movement or deflection of the structure will cause the uh, cracking of the welding joint right or particularly at the connecting point which may cause the heavy leakages right so that will cause the environmental disaster and that may also become the accident right so again uh, this 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 vertical so this is static extent we are needed so this by static analysis we can do right and again so this is the static linear movement there is also possibility that okay in this direction we have control but it is it is pitching right so rolling right or it is yawing, right? It is being rotating like rotating this along the vertical line, right? It can be uh, uh, pitching, right? It can move up and down, right? Or it can be rolling up, right? So that is the angular movement. So again, there are uh, for a static term, the other day we have discussed because in roll, what is the maximum rolling angle, right? So we have to again look at this from the stability point of view, right? The last week we have uh, discussed that uh, there are two things, vertically uh, applied force, which is weight, right? And the buoyancy, right? So buoyancy is uh, our... Uh, for floating structure, so the law of equilibrium, we in that the Archimedes principle is that the weight of the displaced volume, which is water, uh, is the buoyancy force. So if this buoyancy force is equal or uh, more than the weight or more than the downward forces, so the object float, right? If it will be uh, equal, so they will be submerged wherever uh, this is. Uh, so neutral buoyancy, right? So positive buoyancy or negative buoyancy. So if the buoyant forces, right, which will be less than the vertical weight, so the structure sink, right? So uh, in general, we have to look at the positive buoyancy. So positive buoyancy either in linear position as well as in, in angular position, right? The other day we say, if it can be tilted, rolling, so until certain angle, so there will be some, because when it is in this direction, so this part, again, uh, there will be some positive buoyancy. This we have we discussed, we have done some calculation, some basic formula I have shown you, the meta center height, right? The uh, M, so its location is changing, right? So the center of buoyancy, it is the point which is above the center of buoyancy that we have been discussed. So it is meta center height is above the center of gravity, so this will be like a spring, right? The positive or gain buoyancy will be more than the loss buoyancy if it is being tilted like this or like this, particularly uh, because this is the weaker axis. So the roll uh, angle is very, very critical. So this maximum roll angle or pitch angle, because it can be lifted up, so that can topple down, right? or intact stability because even uh, in this case this angle so one it can be toppled down second 
thing because uh, when it will be tilted so the on superstructure so uh, on the platform this module of top side so because they are hook onto the platform right so after certain angle this intact force right because if they are vertical so whatever so the heavy shear will come so this this module will be slide down right this module will be slide down right so the platforms will be just remain the land so, right right all the buildings so we are looking this for the intact stability as well as the sinking effect failure right sometimes uh, we will also do the uh, sensitivity analysis right the uh, causes of accident right some structure like so hull structure four column one of the column is being uh, exploded so the stability hydrostatic stability or hydrodynamic stability of the structure may be maintained so that we have discussed in chapter 3 as i said there much more would be discussed over there right because hydrostatic hydrodynamic stability is one full fledged chapter right in offshore engineering right the masters in offshore engineering which we are running in civil engineering so there is one full chapter on to that right because so uh, this is the uh, angular movement which we have to be uh, bothering or analyzing for static second thing because this is not only one time so it is time dependent all these movement are time dependent so when time dependent as the wave is changing so this uh, the movement like uh, surging is being like this continuously so that is there will be frequency so this is the dynamic effects right because this amplitude is being changing right so these dynamic effects are also we are uh, that is the hydrodynamic stability so the two types of uh, stability of the floating structure which is hydrostatic which is being affected by static behavior and hydrodynamics which is like a frequency uh, which will be causing the uh, second law of newton right the inertial force effects and so on so forth right so uh, this is the most important thing that uh, we have discussed uh, and uh, as uh, last week for hydrostatic and hydro particularly hydrodynamics uh, safety of the structure so we are looking at the uh, frequency or time period of the uh, wave right because just that, like this wave right so this wave are being changing right so the one cycle so the wave operator the the uh, wave spectrum so we can say uh, this is uh, like uh, the if i can uh, right uh, or i can take over here let's say this wave right so the time period is varying and this is spectrum because millions of wave and this is the maximum time period of vibration right let's say it is 15 second and we say it is being varying and this is the most critical right so this is the time period or this is the dynamic characteristics right of the wave right so if any structure will vibrate right because if uh, this pen is vibrate so one complete cycle it will also take the time period uh, closer to that right closer to that 13 second or 16 or 17 second within this range we can say in this region 
the, this is the uh, normal. This is for 100 years data. So this is the wave hydrodynamics, wave frequency or wave uh, the time period which is opposite to that. So this is the situation we have to avoid whenever we are designing the structure. So either the structure will vibrate slower than, uh, slower than this, which means the period of vibration for one cycle will be even higher. So either structure will be falling here or structure will move forward uh, uh, faster than this, right? So structure will complete three cycle when the wave complete one cycle or the structure will complete one cycle. Before that, the waves will uh, consider the three cycle, right? So either uh, which is uh, uh, this the slow vibrating structure or uh, fast vibrating structure, right? So both are like uh, is far, I think, somewhere here, right? So we can design for the dynamic stability because if it will be coming, the velocity uh, or uh, frequency is coming closer to the frequency of the wave like here. So the resonating conditions may exist to the structure and they may cause failure or the, uh, the deterioration effects will be coming to that. So that is the hydrodynamic uh, stability requirement. So static stability and dynamic stability are the two primary design criteria for each of the structure. So that will give, as we have discussed, so the, in our field, frontline engineering, before going to the detailed design, so we have to consider all those things. So all those data, this is like this study of this sea, it is the mad ocean data right so with this data we can right based on the uh, our uh, experiences and based on the uh, fundamentals of physics we can uh, uh, select what would be the uh, better solution right for this uh, condition for this study right so i think uh, uh, with that uh, almost uh, uh, half an hour, I have given an overview of uh, our uh, discussion of last three week, three chapters, right? So it has been refreshed. And I think uh, one is last week were four students. So today are, I think two more students are here. So that uh, half an hour uh, review would have giving you the uh, flavor although uh, you can go through the uh, video recording of the last week lecture but uh, this uh, the first hand the recapping what have we discussed what are the basic requirements as last week i have told you it is uh, not the specific subject for the the uh, offshore engineering Right, because uh, the, for that, the uh, to becoming the uh, expertise to gain the expertise in offshore structure design, so that for that uh, we need to go to the is dedicated masters for the uh, offshore engineering. So, meaning to say, in uh, the first three chapter, there are uh, maybe for gaining more expertise. So there will be three or four full fledged subject for that, right? Uh, or even the whole course, there might be five or six, three credit hour uh, subjects. And this is just uh, one three credit hour subject, which is not only the engineering, but in this subject, we have also uh, understand the behavior of geoscience, behavior of drilling engineering, Right, so the whole business of the oil and gas. 
so the purpose of this subject as uh, I, in my intro to last week and today for the new is that we just uh, would like to uh, have an overview of the offshore oil and gas business right and that overview what is important uh, being an asset manager rather than a blind asset manager so being an asset manager being an engineer working uh, on to if you have been assigned or you got the job opportunity so at least uh, you are familiar with the language of the uh, offshore engineering right so spar semi sub tlp fpso these terms might not be uh, alien to you right so you might not be alienated to the offshore engineering right but for more expertise uh, definitely we have to go to the dedicated right so any question until here it's okay so we will uh, move further right so uh, as i said uh, we will go for the uh, more uh, detail right uh, uh, concept of each of the uh, floating structure right the fixed structure uh, briefly we have discussed which is mostly for shallow water right which is jacket structure or compliant tower uh, so we briefly discussed last week right but as uh, deep water in deep water mostly floating structures or floaters so in other sense and uh, now uh, as our uh, move are more towards deep water so that's why we would like to uh, go more so here again we are not uh, here uh, uh, focusing on the design uh, design equation or software for the design of each of the structure no but we will be looking uh, from this part point of view that what are the main feature right features which means that why uh, i am called spar right what are the different component of spar what are the types of spar right and uh, how i can uh, take my decisions right what are the uh, decision making concept of spar right which are the influencing factors right so again <clears throat> because being a set manager it is also important at senior level you are in uh, offshore or oil and gas industry so uh, you have give, uh, the three uh, alternative proposal are presented to you right you have to take decision whether you have to go to spar tlp or fpso or, or mixed right so uh, you must know right what are the drawbacks of the spar just now in the beginning i have uh, told you whenever we are going so why uh, we will go to fpso why i will go to uh, this or why i will go to combine right so, so that kind of familiarization that kind of overview now we will take from each of uh, this kind of floating structure so we will discuss in the beginning uh, uh, that's why rather than more uh, on the textual things i have added more uh, graphics i have added more pictures and once uh, i will uh, wrap up uh, the discussion uh, on spar so i will also some 10 or 12 minutes long video on the spar installation there are many right uh, even on youtube there are many available you can also uh, download but i have also downloaded many relevant video also i have much collection but i will just show you uh, maybe the uh, video link i will share with you on on later on right on the you learn next because if i cannot dial, download all the size is very big so uh, the uh, uh, the video link i can also share with you later but i will show you so how 
is far is transported from the fabrication yard right as as an example of one spar real spar site right and how it is being installed and how it works so that short 10 minutes or 12 minutes long video uh, that will make uh, your concept uh, more and more clear right so you would have been understand what it is right so uh, that is the three main thing and little bit on design criteria or selection criteria uh, that but uh, our major emphasis is uh, feature of spars for understanding right uh, as in front of you right so this is like uh, the spar as we say it is the uh, intermediate structure right which is the platform platform is the deck at the top of this uh, the deck is just like land right because in sea we don't have land so like on the ground uh, we are going to make petronas twin towers so in klcc we got the land so land is the platform right so this much hectare land at which the building is located right or this factory or this building we have to made in the middle of the sea right so we need the land so the land is this deck right this uh, purplish color line so that is the deck right which is the platform and again as i was saying so this platform uh, is ho hosting right this crane this living quarter uh, uh, the the control room uh, maybe uh, there will be some production processing zone storage of all, several thing right so these are modules or the building right like the industrial complex right so uh, this platform to be stable right so its movement static and dynamic movement will ensure right that all this because uh, uh, whenever we are looking the uh, on land so the uh, intact stability is being questioned when there is heavy wind 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 storm or the tornado or, or sorry earthquake will cause the our building damages right but uh, in this even the wave uh, right the wave storm will cause that the intact of all these building may be lost with this platform right so this platform is resting onto this intermediate structure right which is the substructure and that is being fixed onto the foundation right it is being connected so the location of this platform will be so this whatever is is par which is this cylindrical type of structure right so it is long cylindrical uh, structure right so that is is par and it is partly under water this is the water line so the cross section is being cut so you can see that it is more than 2/3 right uh, like until here where is my uh, bottom of the slide until here right it is like so from here to here is something like the depth right so it is something like 2/3 is in water or let's say 1/3 is above the water right because it should not be right we have to keep uh, this bottom of the platform and the uh, highest sea level as a gap which is called the ear gap right again for the uplifting and the intact stability particularly at this moment it is stable and calm water right but Uh, this uh, fixing this gap we will be uh, keeping right the mat ocean data this right 100 years or 200 year data so we may be expecting maybe uh, in 20 years time or 50 years time what would be the most worst condition of the sea right not this the most worst condition so So this is the minimum gap as at the moment it is for example 10 meter or 20 meter right so uh, 
under this we say minimum 4 meter free board air gap should be maintained under the worst condition right so that's why for that reason again for stability so air gap is an other uh, term right which so this is the physical meaning of air gap this uh, water level and the soffit of this uh, pinkish line bottom of the pinkish line the clearance is the air gap that we have to maintain right and because this is not going all the way at the sea bottom right we are talking deep water right so it may be 100 meter 200 meter long right 100 or 200 meter long but this water depth may be one kilometer it may be two kilometer right so this is submerged so we have to do we have to keep it on position otherwise it will keep on floating so we have to tide by flexible uh, mean so this flexible mean although tighten this wire type right one two three this side uh, one two three so this tight right we have taken some flexible mean like uh, this wire and we have tightened right so this is the mooring line right this is the mooring line so at somewhere here mid height it is being hooked onto the structure and it is anchored at the bottom further away the at angular position and this is tightened position we call uh, this the taut mooring line but not vertical it is diagonal taut the uh, so there will be much tension and this tension can also give some time of type of stability because there will be uh, this tension so the buoyant forces will uh, keep it up afloat right so again some design criteria and this diameter is uh, something like 50 meter or 100 meter or 150 meter and inside there will be hole so again uh, there will be uh, as you can visualize inside some pipings are going right so there will be uh, this risers right so those are connecting to the wells or somewhere right production site so or either you are getting the uh, 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 drilling uh, or the well head at the top right so these are uh, the well are located bottom somewhere near if it is a dry tree or wet tree right so these are the riser so there may be variety of risers because uh, we have to send right uh, fluid in for injecting right some well the other day i have told you right or, or in here right so from here we have to send the some kind of fluid to pump so this is we have to inject right inject somewhere this is the injection well so this is injecting here and it is pushing oil somewhere and the oil is it is pushing oil to the next well right this well it is the production well so it will lift up the oil up so this riser is the uh, because this one of the pipe it is for injecting purpose this pipes or pipeline which is maybe 10 or 12 pipeline are production which is pumping the oil up right oil is coming up so depending on to the size of that so that will be located in the middle right of the it is located in the middle of this hollow cylindrical structure right so uh, this is just uh, i have given on the this slide is the the basic the the uh, big picture of the spar right as it is so uh, now uh, we will go in the detail right what is spar what are the types because you see the in this case the top half 
is the solid cylindrical and the bottom is some uh, is cell types or uh, trust type why it is so whether all spars are like this right what are the different component like as i say the uh, this uh, mooring line so the how it is being connected to that the risers how risers are hung inside the this uh, what if i need to gain some buoyancy right so uh, whether we can uh, because the natural buoyancy is coming from this submerged position from water right volume but where uh, we can also gain or induce some artificial buoyancy so uh, where uh, in which location of the spar which we can how uh, this uh, deck will be hook up with the uh, spar right the the substructure so what are the various and uh, this even the top side are this generic top side or dedicated uh, to that the payload payload is the weight uh, the live load right the because whatever on this deck right we cannot put everything right we cannot uh, make 20 story building right so based on this capacity so what are the payload requirement whether uh, this load right whatever coming including the operating and live load what is the maximum capacity which is the payload capacity right this is spar can take right the limitations of the spar that we will be discussed and how uh, this piece is being fabricated right in the shipyard and which are at the shore as i said uh, you are uh, working your site is maybe in africa or somewhere but uh, because this is a specialist job and we see that capel singapore or south korean uh, uh, shipyards are uh, one of the most modern in Asia or also considered in the world, right? So they are doing the job not only for, for example, the Singaporean shipyard is not only doing the job for the Malaysia or Indonesia, but they have many projects for India, uh, maybe of Africa, Middle East, and even the Europe, right? So. Uh, the next important thing, if it is 200 meter long, maybe 50,000 ton or uh, capacity, how do you transport this? Either you will fabricate into single structure or you have to fabricate into the fabrication yard into two pieces, right? So although it looks very simple, but it also considers some uh, uh, type of feasibility. Right, so that is the construction and installation, right? So that we will be uh, trying to understand, right? So that is the brief intro, which is being uh, more uh, what I have explained. Some you will find over here, right? Because if I will uh, just read out this slide, so uh, that might not give you the uh, current picture. Right, because uh, bec how you will get visualization. So now, if I will just, you can just read out and whatever missing feature I will explain. So that will give you more flavor, uh, which I have uh, done the illustration onto the title slide. Right. So as we say, I spar is a deep draft floating Kazon structure. Kazon is case like which is hollow cylindrical deep draft as i said two one two third or three fourth is in water right so it is deep draft right uh, one third or one fourth is above water so the structure is very long and 75 percent or 70 percent is under water so the high draft deep draft right and it will maintain it it has the advantage for angular equilibrium right because uh, for uh, this deep draft right so again 
the advantage of deep draft so if a force is applying and that it is lying to tilt like this so uh, there will be counter passive force right passive force and this is the active force right it is tending to tilt like this right so this angular equilibrium right it can be controlled by this deep draft right uh, because heavy arm under water it is resisting right you are pushing there right so this water resistance will be coming by water right so in this direction so this angle can be minimized right so again when uh, this like the wind direction or something right so to for gaining the feasibility why i have chosen so this is if you are having for example in this direction rolling right this is uh the rolling effects right or pitching so you this is because in this direction right so it can roll or pitch right uh it, it is a square shape but it can be so again a square shape roll or pitch may be the same so again uh, this angular equilibrium right and second thing because of this structure so you can also restrict the static sway right the linear movement linear and angular movement will be so it is and in dynamically right so if even wind is or wave is moving fast right but it will be vibrating very slow right because of this deep drop so it going like this right this and this right is stable so one cycle rightward leftward so when three or four wave pass right from here then it will complete so it will be slow moving right so if this is the uh, uh, time period of the wave so the uh, spar may be lying over here depending on to that right so these are the some uh, again the title slide this illustration uh, give you more clear so as i say right so now uh, this slide uh, will be understandable to you a spar is a deep draft floating caisson which is a hollow inside hollow cylindrical structure like a very large boy its four major systems are hull uh, mooring uh, top side and riser hull the structure itself right this is uh, this cylinder is hull mooring top side right and riser right so these are the four critical structure not the sub structure so the first is the hull itself right then <coughs> uh, we have to uh, control right the uh, top side and all so the hull is the this is the hull hull is the most important thing right this is the hull so uh, this is mooring this is top side and inside there are riser so this this and this they are contributing to the stability of hull and hull is resisting their effects right because this mooring right they are tightening so the wave effects causing mooring so they can also push the hull here and there but because hull is uh, very rigid compared to that so hull can resist the effects right tension coming to this mooring so it is changing 
same thing riser when uh, either a fluid is moving down or moving up so so it will also cause some movement but compared to the velocity of fluid into the pipeline so the hull can sustain this right and again the top side the weight buoyancy uh, so uh, that uh, it will also affects right so the hull is the main component right uh, among all four hull is the one which is addressing right the safety of the platform is depending on to the hull right so the spar uh, relies on a traditional mooring system that is anchor spread mooring why spread because uh, they are diagonal vertical they are just below but spar on the uh, this is your uh, again uh, if on the plan right so this is your uh, spar and the mooring line connecting here and it is going the far so the circle of mooring line is very big right i can draw the two one big circle and one so for example it is 50 60 meter is far this may be 1 km diameter 2 km diameter right so that is spreading the mooring line for example 10 or 20 mooring right is anchored here and anchored here right right so this is what you are looking right this line right as uh, so these are on the ground this is uh, sea bottom right sea bottom so this is spreading on to the sea bottom so what it is saying the spar relies on traditional mooring system that is anchor uh, that is anchor spread mooring to maintain its position about 90% of the structure is under water just now i have shown you right uh, the distinguishing feature of spar is its deep draft hull uh, which i have just explained to you how it will uh, uh, help you in maintaining the angular and linear uh, movement of the structure and which will keeping the frequency right a uh, very uh, uh, low frequency or high time period so which produces very favorable motion characteristic compared to other floater concept but on some particular condition low motions low motions as i say it will be moving slowly right time period and protected center wall the spa the risers are also protected inside right so the risers because it is this so uh, when the risers coming to that so if it is uh, uh, 20 100 meter or 50 meter so these are uh, also uh, against this wave so the inside the risers are also protected right excellent configuration for deep water operations right even you will go to to other kind of uh, structure so there are also similar or uh, some added benefits which spar will not give you so but these are the strong point of the spar right so uh, this slide which i have explained in my intro right and so now it would have made you clear what is spar and what are its technical and functional benefit how it will work right roughly so uh, just now uh, you, we have seen in the title slide so there are uh, three kinds of spar right uh, which is classic spar right the first generation spar uh, that was the uh, built which is uh, the full right whether 100 meter long 200 meter long so it was built like a 
have full right solid cylinder vehicle but there was also some issues came because of the current so when uh, a solid rigid object so sometime too rigid is also not good because of that uh, the the uh, waves cause the heavy vortices right the uh, vortices the circulation of current right it uh, because the what something you are uh, throwing you strike right so some the water just like considering right this is the uh, wall or something and you are driving car so you are striking so energy will be 100% breaking over there so that will cause something like if you just hit to another car what will be happen so the same thing the vortices or the current effect sudden so the energy release that may cause the sudden effects right so uh, those those were that was the earlier version right and uh, this classic spar is apc neptune right in uh, gulf of mexico and not very far right it was 1997 version right so its diameter uh, was uh, uh, 172 sorry 72 to 122 feet in diameter right then uh, there was come right with the experience of uh, this uh, the uh, spar because uh, of this so some at lower level energy could be released so they for releasing the so rather than energy will break break over here so energy should dissipate right so they have come up this kind of right uh, truss right so the perforation so the any high flowing wave right like tidal slide right if you look right so this wave so this energy will pass through right so over there so this is the truss spar and uh, which is 90 feet in to 149 feet uh, they are there right and example is nansen and apc right these were the uh, operators uh, or the uh, designer they have done this right so nansen 2002 then uh, they have further modified right so then uh, instead of one so they have come up to the bundle of uh, a small diameter right so which is the cell spar they found it is much more right so some are the half length some are the full length right so rather than so the truss some other structural problem came so they have come up to this right so these are the three main Uh, class and these spikes are because if you are giving solid so again uh, for some the wave ramming effects and they can be used this is spikes can be used for uh, connection of the mooring line but this throughout this is also giving because in the beginning if it will be uh, the flat it will be the flat surface so the direct hit of the uh, wind energy uh, wave energy can cause the other uh, dynamic effect so that is the for breaking or dealing diverting the wave and current effects so this features are being made right so the concept was first time patented in 1986 right Uh, this gentleman for deep water de development right so deep water draft which means under water which are being there which is 150 meter to 200 225 meter provide excellent storm for performance right and stability for operator right under stormy condition right so uh, this is the anticipated draft which means under water above water as i say depending on to the uh, air gap 
so riser system enable direct well bore access right because you are coming and you can have the direct well bore access right it, they can go directly to the well bore so wet tree oh sorry dry tree so three generations which i have shown you here right so which is classic uh, truss and the cell so deepest uh, is the uh, this one uh, so far right uh, uh, in the deepest water right in the gulf of mexico right uh, maybe if you can research right maybe la because last over one year right last time i upgraded this slides in 2018 so uh, by that time on the internet what data was there right but because these deep water is not or the, these kind of technologies are not like apple every four month something right but maybe one or two platform might have come right but as whatever data i am not uh, saying in my slide it is not as of today may 2021 right so uh, last uh, i updated my slides lectures in 2018 uh, may semester i think i offered this course right so uh, uh, so it is based on that right uh, sorry se september 2018 so uh, but uh, but still it is a good reference so 7000 about 2500 meter in gulf of mexico which is mostly a us site right and production capacity right so uh, this is million cubic feet per day of gas right production capacity from 250 a million capacity per day right mmcfd right so this is cubic feet million uh, uh, cubic feet uh, per day right these are the again the production unit for gas right and for uh, that is being taken for this red hawk platform which is a cell spar right and to this is the barrel of oil per day right so from this this much gas production 250 million cubic feet right so this is the gas is normally uh, gas and both oil and gas are mostly measured in volumetric unit right so million uh, cubic feet per day is volume of the gas so and the gas uh, the oil is 125 thousand right uh, roughly 0.125 million barrel right so which is very huge just one platform can right so the malaysia in from the malaysian water is uh, the total production per day is 500000 right so uh, meaning to say uh, this kind of four platforms are Uh, equivalent to the uh, daily malaysian oil production right so you just i'm what i'm giving you the example 125000 right uh, barrel of oil per day production so you can sense in malaysian uh, water saba sarawak and karte coast right so until now including all platform i think which is uh, if i'm not mistaken 70 or to 90 are the jacket and the three or four uh, deep water so in total 780 or 90 installations right are being producing 500000 plus minus right uh, malaysia uh, is roughly 500000 plus minus right barrel of oil per day so uh, with 80 or 90 installation so just you can sense that uh, this platform is giving 125000 so 10 of such platform uh, will give very 
huge kind of this. So that is basically, this is indicating, right, 125,000, one platform, this is indicating the type of business, right? So uh, if uh, you are taking even $60 a barrel, right? So what is the daily business, right? You can add uh, one or if you can add two more zero divided by half, right? Uh, or double it. So one more zero. So it is like uh, uh, 20, uh, 20, uh, 2.5 to $3 million per day, right? Uh, this will give $3 million roughly from today's oil pricing, right? $3 million per day, $90 million, right, per month, and uh, $1 billion per year, right? So as I was telling the economy, $1 billion per year, right? So definitely, uh, right? If the uh, the development cost, the operator has put one or one point two billion, so one or one point two billion, right? When you are putting the cost, right? Just I'm taking roughly. I'm also not the expert uh, in oil and I'm the poor professor, right? But uh, what I my understanding, what if I would be economist? So on that same note, right? Just on the Finger, finger tips, right? So based on that, if I can base, right? Uh, for 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 next uh, five years or uh, plus minus, so oil pricing just as the fluctuations come, uh, because now if fifty dollar on that, if I can work out, so we are getting something like two point five to uh, three million uh, dollar per day of business. Right, roughly uh, the whole year we can get uh, around one billion dollar, and one billion dollar if I can take uh, twenty percent as the net uh, reserve profit. So that might take uh, because this pro platform in this characteristic roughly it might cost one billion U.S. dollar, right? Which is like. 4 billion, 4.2 billion ringgit, right? So it is the uh, roughly like this or even lower than this, which, so I'm just looking at this pricing and uh, rough weather and all in Gulf of Mexico. So if it is the production cost total maximum $1 billion. So with this $1 billion, so you may expect this kind of production. Then, the, the the project is feasible right but if you can uh, you are expecting 10 percent of the production like this right like for example uh, 10 thousand barrel of oil or 20 thousand barrel of oil right so and in this kind of investment so it is not the feasible project right then you may expect uh, the where the break even time will go right so that is just as I say, I'm saying that because being a set manager, we have to play around with that as well, right? So these are the features which I have already uh, explained, right? So water depth capability has been stated by industry as ranging uh, 300,000 meter, right? So that can be, uh, so far, the proven technology up to uh, three kilometer water depth. So we can place the spar uh, safely. It can be useful drilling and production capacity as just now uh, dry trees, right? So they can be used, but no storage, direct vertical access production riser, right? Surface as I have given here the direct production. These risers are coming onto the platform. So you can have Derek over here, right? 
so this is not this is only production but you can have the drilling capacity right uh, uh, and blow out onto the uh, surface right a steel catenary riser import and export import as which means the uh, the uh, oil right uh, uh, can, sorry injection can go and uh, oil can suck and injection fluid will be exported or the oil can be directly exported inherently stable center of buoyancy is located above the center of gravity right because of this favorable motion compared with other traditional construction steel or concrete hull but commonly steel i did not see any concrete in my knowledge cost insensitive to water depth right so not very sensitive so uh, one two kilometer to 2.5 kilometer uh, some not full but some potential oil storage can be made inside because uh, it is deep draft so some in the inner uh, core uh, some storage but not as compared to maybe uh, 10000 barrel or 5000 barrel of oil storage can be made Re relocation over a wide range of water depth uh, because uh, if uh, uh, it can be the end of service life it can be relocated conventional drilling and process component use so these are some features right so again uh, uh, it is a comparison right uh, and the feature this is the plan of the deck right this is the cross section which is the top side this is uh, uh, big ben right and uh, these are some what is the soft tank soft tank mean meaning to say which are filled with some uh, foam so that can be used for creating buoyancy right the soft tank hard tank where it can be inside you can mm, fill with the you can fill with the right hard tank providing buoyancy or tank for ballast right we can fill during installation and in place as i say ballast we have to sometime lower down we have to add weight storage production in the operation phase so, so this tank can also be used for oil storage as i say form the heave plane so these are also used for controlling the right the position right so that will be used for controlling the angular movement right and uh, covering the uh, or maintaining the stability right once the chapter uh, three we have been discussed right so you can add weight here you can add so there will be some compartment right so if it will be uh, uh, right so if let's say the the platform is tilting like that so this is tilting position so you can add some weight over here right so it will push it down right so this compartment will be filled right the form of the heave balance or it is lifting up and down right so this will be filled or if it is filled it can be emptied right to be used for water ballast water ballast means the water can be added in here right so that can uh, the change the position and it can maintain the uh, gm right so meta center height right so center of gravity g and meta center right if it is tilted and the m right the in chapter 3 this distance is gm so it will push up so the m will be shifted so gm will be maintained and it will be right so that is the purpose of different tank right so these are as uh, the platform is shown right 
so this is uh, is part platform are com so this is uh, being fabricated in the fabricated yard and this is being right uh, in the site this is neptune right so uh, which is being uh, there is helipad and production platform right so this slide is showing right a series of uh, 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 this sorry spar platform uh, different actual site in different water depth right so you can see at the bottom uh, right so there is the uh, water depth uh, right wd water depth and the diameter right and the length right length diameter right so length means uh, from here to here right and diameter and water depth right you can see so uh, these are the name of site mostly you are in us gulf of mexico mostly right but like kk right kk is malaysia right so tahiti is in uh, i think uh, south africa right so uh, just i think uh, these are uh, the uh, uh, the day i was preparing my slide in 2000 late 2018 early 2019 so uh, these were the so called the uh, spar right in different water depth and different characteristics have been placed right so you can see these are the earlier spars were the classic spars and now the second or third generation right so mostly truss spar you can see including the kk is the truss spar right and it was fabricated in the MMHE, Pasir Gudang, uh, I think in 2007 or 8. If I forget the date, but at that time, two, three times I have visited. Uh, I took my student uh, over there and I have seen at that time it was fabricating there in, in uh, MMHE, right? And in this, the uh, cell spar is uh, one only right mostly we have seen in this slide right but maybe there will be other so uh, i could not get and the deepest water uh, you have uh, in here the key k is uh, 1200 meter right water depth but it is in 5400 so 1800 meter water depth right so so you can see the classic spar were mostly in uh, these water depth right so these are the uh, various projects which will uh, give you an idea right where and like uh, where you see the derrick right so it is uh, these are the production platform uh, sorry drilling as well right the well head is there so these are the riser and uh, these are the and you can see mostly at right, derricks we have seen right even the kk because it's the uh, drilling platform right deep water drilling platform so well head is there right so we are, when this derrick right, is showing and it it is i think uh, i did not see derrick here so it is a production platform so it may be derrick there will be some but in kk mostly production uh, facilities are on fpso there is also fpso with that right so uh, these are some uh, platform So these are some uh, uh, the weight right of some platform. A typical deep water spar platform has been considered to estimate the initial sizing of the substructure for meeting the 
these are something like uh, the top side weight uh, the roughly with supporting bars so 18000 to 20000 ton storage capacity up to 18000 barrel storage right every day it can clear right and from there it can be pumping out right through the pipeline right because directly sometimes you have to in the pipeline so you again you have to maintain the velocity right the pipeline again uh, when uh, ever you will go to the uh, next uh, week uh, the the pipeline reliability of pipeline so the chapter 1 you will see the you know, gathering line or trun trunk line and export line so the uh, rate of velocity is the rate at which you are pumping the oil so in this riser the velocity will be different right so export pipeline will be different so you cannot directly pump oil into the export pipeline right because uh, uh, there will be different velocity right so what it is being saying so uh, the production is coming here and from there it is going to export pipeline sometime so these are the water depth uh, some studies center wall slot well slot so this is the uh, one well uh, is uh, uh, 15 meter by 15 meter so the diameter will be also connected so 10 wells uh, it can handle 10 well 20 well right so one well is, uh, is roughly you know, 125 square meter right so uh, for example uh, 10 well 1250 square meter area so diameter uh, should come from there air gap 25 meter is roughly these are some guideline right i am not saying that so uh, these are uh, some uh, consideration full drilling rig right so drilling rig when you are designing the right uh, the the platform you are designing the deck right so the operating pressure operating forces so uh, which are the mechanical forces you are mostly from mechanical so the rig uh, which is being working so normally on horse power energy right so the rig pumping is being done so the drilling rig normally work at 3000 horse power right and work over rig work over which means when uh, not drilling with pumping and all so uh, when work over production so it will be working on to 600 to 1000 horse power right so uh, this is the when ever uh, on the platform you are putting the rig pump and rig right so the energy source so that will be uh, using the data for the designing right so this energy is coming to the deck side right so that is the so the basic hull dimensions uh, have been calculated for the concept so barge deck and uh, so designed to form the primary support right so just hard tank and soft tank air gap so these are the and uh, the in this we have to maintain a positive gm right which uh, in chapter 3 i have uh, shown you so these are some typical dimension right uh, uh, as i said uh, uh, some i have shown you so these are the variation so length and width right so so this is the height of this right so the well bay hard tank dimensions diameter soft tank right so the truss structure so these are the uh, just for visualization various factoring uh, factors which will affect type of top side facilities right again production drilling or both right just now of uh, production uh, we have to keep in our mind that uh, the production uh, rig this is the 
uh, operating energy drilling rig right so again the designing right so that will also be considered production drilling or both number of conductor which means the well head will dictate the uh, center well and the because just now we see that uh, one well roughly it occupy 120 to 130 square meter of area right so the number of conductor which means injection and production well 10 well 20 well so the internal diameter 50 meter or 100 meter will be dictated by that right so so this is one need for storage capacity so the hard tanks will be used for 10,000 barrel or 20,000 barrel, right? The size of hard tank, it will come to that. Type of tensioning to be used for uh, riser, buoyancy canes. So that uh, we have to tensions uh, down this, right? So to keep in position, presence of vortex induced vibration strikes on the hard tank might lead the strike which i have shown you these are the strike for uh, as i said to you for controlling the vortices right the vortices should not find so this is striking is being done fabrication method to be used vertical or stacking preferred as mostly staking like this right like sometimes if it is very long into two pieces right so because you cannot transport so uh, these two half when reach close to the site so they are being welded together right so this is the fabrication here and well head bay size and layout depending on to the number of well bay right at the platform right so the platform size is also b and its supporting facilities right so these are some stable the rule stability gm free board how much it is right at whenever we are lowering how much uh, this is being required right floating stability range up to 32 degree right when it is rolling or pitching this is the air gap these are the minimum requirement so those are i have just uh, discussed so these are some uh, cutting and cross section which you can say see right which most of the part i have explained so genesis right so these are some trusses part right so more or less uh, this is being showing that onto the barge right either it is uh, uh, transferring to the site right so this is for Nansen in 2001, right? Was installed in Gulf of Mexico. So uh, just uh, these are the, uh, you see the soft tank, right? All uh, these. So this is a cell star for, right? So, and uh, this is uh, some classic spars, how it is being loaded, right? So spar economic, uh, spar designs are the most economical for the ultra deep water. So by utilizing a mooring system instead of uh, permanent uh, legs, spar platforms reduce material cost and can be moved to different wells, right? Oryx spent dollar three hundred million on Neptune. Right? This is the cost, as I say, the big. Uh, I have given 1 billion, right? So this is roughly, uh, there might be um, uh, not 100,000, 50, 60,000 barrel of oil. The world first production is power platform, right? So that they span at that time. Neptune was estimated to save Oryx and it is 50-50 partner uh, by 90 million saving. So this is like uh, the construction being done, right? Uh, uh, and 
the hot tank so you can see right so these are the tank where uh, you can store these are the position of hot tank where we can store water or velocity right so this is the more clear picture and uh, this is the installation of top side once it is being uh, there right so and uh, these are the uh, some uh, functionality both dry or wet tree subsea bop drilling so these are uh, so some uh, more so so this is the mooring system right as i said about 250 feet right here so half a kilometer right so this is like a taut mooring system right and uh, this is the number of mooring how these are being all round right for the making of the installation and uh, this mooring uh, the, is being uh, working out because of this position this deflection this is the riser right this riser so the drilling riser right so this is the maximum of setting right which it can be right so based on that right this is the offsetting which is the linear deflection right so it is being said that uh, uh, this is like comparing with semi submersible why it is this in neptune right so this is providing better because if semi submersible if uh, this much deflection it cannot get so this riser can have the problem right so this is some uh, neptune platform pictures right so these are the riser ca characteristics so riser system, how it is being, uh, uh, because top tension riser, this is at the bottom, right? And it is going and how it is being. So different parts of the risers are giving. So this is, I think, TK, if I'm not mistaking, some from MMH. So some fabrication picture, right? So you can say, and this is the transportation, and this is installation. So just before, before the, this is on this uh, barge, this, so it is uh, being up unloaded and it is up and, right? So these are some pictures, right? So this is the SPAR development. Right, so as you can see, this is the wellhead connecting to that and on top, right? So this is the, uh, uh, the, the risers are coming and this is, so uh, these are some field development and uh, these are showing the export line to the uh, like uh, crude oil terminal, right? Or the shuttle tanker can also be used, right? So this is Nansen oil, right? So this is another de development, right? This subsea system. So again, the weather conditions uh, also is influence the cost and schedule of construction, right? So the rough weather, particularly like Gulf of Mexico, right? So how APC facility reschedule. So these are some project management thing. And the list below are the order of event for a typical. So well pre-drilling started when we are doing the fabrication, export pipeline laid. These are the stages. Pre-site survey, transport area deployment for anchor piling because once it will cause anchor pile which is for the uh, mooring line connection hull delivery and appending temporary work deck setting 
so these are the uh, mooring and pipeline attachment with hull mooring line pretension because we have it is tight top side delivery and buoyancy cane installation so these are the sequence roughly not exactly followed so this is the installation processes right so uh, uh, we i can show you the uh, uh, uh one slide then uh, sorry a uh, short video yeah so this is uh, this may also I think this is animated video. Yeah, it is animated video. So, so as uh, the site development as you can see these are the piles, right? Uh, suction piles, right? Or we say, because at which the anchors will be It is taking this pile deep. So we say the uh, pre anchor, right? The pile, it is going deep. And there will be some ROV, yeah, that at the back, it is being monitored by remote operated vehicle, right? right. So this chain and ROV is monitoring, right? Uh, unmanned so this pile is anchoring right so the uh, because while the the uh, platform or hull is this so these are the manipul manipulator on the rov remote operated vehicle it is cable connected from the surface people so there are two rovs right you can see one is working here one is monitoring so this is uh, like so this pile has been so the the now uh, this you can see it is being sailing right the the truss anchor uh, uh, the spar and these are the so this is upending right reached close to the site it is faster, but uh, from the barge, once it reach, right? So it is now the uh, mooring line, right? Uh, this over there, so again, ROV manipulator. So the pile, anchor pile, it is being locking right so once the force transfer so again it is not too real. so because it is not direct so not vertical to to have horizontal and vertical component so the mooring line angle and all these being set right so laid and then So this, these are the mid-height boys, 
for reducing the tension into the mooring line sometimes or the current effects. See, these are taking. So the, this part is there. Now you see. It is taking for connection to the hull. Now, it is looks it is very simple operation but uh, a lot of precautions are being taken oh some uh, maybe okay. so now top sides are being installing these are the top site module right once uh, the hull is being placed so this top site so now this now it will be hooking up right these are the hooking up right for intact stability right as you can see so that is a little bit blasting right come so these uh, the module by module Right, are being so this might be the living quarter. So this is the installation uh, barge, and this is the transportation barge, uh, the loading barge. So, uh, so like a uh, number of stories and they are being installed. So at the moment, the mooring line are uh, placed but not finalized. Final tension will be done. So now the final pre -ten final tensioning, right? Because as per this, you see all these mooring line, one, two, three, you can see, right? At this side as well, right? So these are the uh, mooring line and deep draft and different inside are the riser. So I think uh, that's all. And I believe it has uh, uh, given to you some understanding, right? So what, uh, because uh, you I have seen last slides, uh, mostly I have explained to you on to these figures, right? So what all this, even the, this uh, animated video or my explanation so this installation process description, 
so that would have been uh, uh, clear to you right so uh, we can take some 10 minutes break uh, uh, 1226 is that so we can uh, meet at 1240 is it okay right we can meet at 1240 and uh, most probably uh, i will try to wrap up the next uh, tension lag and uh, the the semi submersible right uh, if i can do this so tomorrow uh, we can uh, discuss the uh, fpso right so the uh, slides which i have uh, given so today tomorrow maybe if uh, uh, 50 percent which are 186 slides so 100 110 slides we can uh, discuss today so the rest slides we can uh, discuss tomorrow then uh, the last week which week 10 uh, we will come so we can discuss rest of the slide okay so uh, uh, we will uh, stop for 10 by 12:40 we can resume that okay thank you you Okay, so can you see the slides? It's okay. Okay. Okay, we can start. So as uh, uh, some what we discussed with spark things are applicable. So it may be uh, shortened than the uh, spark, right? Because uh, some features are. So now in the uh, we will discuss the same thing on the feature and concepts of the tension lake platform, right? So compared to the spark. So the basic difference in the configuration is this, as you can see, right? So uh, there was uh, uh, the first thing is the hull size. So this is the uh, basic hull, which are like these four columns, right? The su supporting structure. So these four columns, you can see, uh, or three columns, right? So, so these are the columns which are uh, resting right this is the uh, uh, bluish line which is being uh, there right uh, in the water and uh, the uh, brownish line is the above water right and uh, this right you can see this horizontal underwater it is called the uh, uh, the horizontal right a part of the hull right so uh, uh, th then uh, these are the tension leg so the beam which is connecting right the column right so uh, this is uh, the uh, hull structure one two three four column you can see or it, on these four column or maybe some column so uh, this the uh, deck is directly right resting right and this uh, below this right so this is the vertical uh, mooring which is the tension right which is the st straight vertical mooring and which is connected at the bottom onto the template and it is same thing uh, these are the top side module as Derek is being shown here in this slide so then it means it is the also the a uh, drilling uh, of production uh, platform right so uh, this is uh, uh, 
we can say it is the semi rigid or semi flexible right because uh, this is a vertical tensioner or restricting its uh, flexibility so semi flexible or it is not the uh, fixed platform and uh, not 100% flexible compared to the uh, uh, spar or uh, we will see more flexible is the uh, semi submersible so a tension led platform is also a buoyant platform held in place why buoyant because uh, the 100% stability is coming by this buoyancy upward force right as uh, uh, the load uh, from here is downward load and it is being resisted by the upward force right the buoyancy due to buoyancy right because the tension in this wires right because uh, this is the if we can say uh, this is the wire and the tension in wire is coming by due to buoyancy right this tension is in the wire is coming this is uh, at the ground uh, and uh, this is the hull right so this tension right this tension is due to buoyancy because buoyant force right are throwing it up right and the weight is down so the this is weight including all these feature so buoyancy is greater than equal to weight so that's why it is called the buoyant platform right so this is coming to buoyancy right so the tlp like conventional fixed platform except that the platform is maintained conventional fixed right as we say it is a rigid not this right this is conventional fixed so it is resting on to the this rigid leg with uh, because of the depth but tension leg it is flexible leg right which is tensioner and that's why it can go right so this is not uh, because of the buoyancy but it is uh, being subjected to this but this is getting tension because of buoyancy so that's why it is like this but difference is this it is fully rigid it is uh, semi rigid or semi flexible So TLPs are like conventional fixed platform, except that the platform is maintained on location using mooring held in tension by the buoyancy of the hull. Right. So the buoyancy is uh, generating into the hull. Uh, that's why uh, the hull is partly in the water. Right. The buoyancy into the hull. Right. So this weight is being displaced. This water is displaced by this, right? This. So that's why it is partly into the water, right? The template is held in place by piles at the bottom, right? We are uh, at the bottom, right? We are this uh, wire. Wire is connected to a plate which is template and this template is uh, connected to the pile right just in the video i have shown you right so uh, this plate is connected so this vertical wire right will be So this is the tension and it is being connected 
to this so this is the plate is the template so the top side facilities are also uh, processing facilities for the uh, pumping and all pipeline and surface trees surface trees dry trees as well right because well head can bring i have shown you in that of the tlp and most of the daily operators are the same as for other platform two variations to the more conventional tlp are uh, these are the uh, in the shape these are the name of TLPs used, right? The Moses, uh, these uh, are uh, shown in here. Here is, so maybe. Yeah. Yeah, this is the Moses platform. So as you can see, uh, the uh, column connected by horizontal member uh, like this, right? The full template, this is pontoon, right? So uh, like this uh, template, the column and at the corner, this is, right? So Modak Moses design is being considered by the least one gulf of mexico operator as this is the tendon and this is the template whereas uh, you can see that the, the one column and the three hull horizontal member right sorry pontoon hull so the pontoon is a star shape right? the three point right the hull is a star shape so but again there is uh, the uh, limitation of uh, this right so the top uh, the moses shown in this figure is under consideration by at least one of so uh, uh, gulf of mexico operator so as i discussed the uh, mooring system is vertically oriented right so uh, it is being based on or the uh, the design is based on the elasticity right because uh, it is very sensitive when uh, the dimension right the uh, one thing you are getting this tension right it is fixed over here right this tension so that is basically uh, if we can look the stress strain behavior of a steel so there should be this stress strain right so that can use fy so that can use 60 to 70 under the critical tension it should not go so we have to control because if the design like for example corrosion wear and tear so if the fy we are using 350 mega pascal right steel so we can say that under service condition so it should not under most critical it should not go to 275 or 250 mega pascal so this is the safety margin right we can maintain so what we are talking low elasticity so under this and the fatigue losses so the design must be based on that for the tendon right because these are purely elastic material so again advantages of this uh, there are surface well head right which we can have in uh, this tension like platform right uh, we can have vertical access of well right so again uh, uh, we can somewhere this insight right this is showing production riser right so this is the uh, well head and this is the well control this is drilling 
so direct vertical axis right so these are the well injection and projection production well in uh, ursa platform so this is direct axis right to the platform right so the so as it is saying vertical axis to well through ttr tension top tension riser this is top tension because this is in tension and from top you are pulling right so these are called the top tension riser or ttr right so risers wells right so this is you can do production riser or well so uh, support of remote well through uh, uh, so we can also support the uh, far this is direct right access right so we can also give support to the far through catenary riser right which can go here right so this is also possibility so drilling and work over capacity which we can do both drilling work over means production and once drilling completed right improve motion characteristics compared to so some are because it is just like guitar the stability or touching so elasticity right because stretching conditions or tighten or elasticity right so in this vertical uh, here so this elasticity in this region so it will keep it vertical right so the the motion characteristics it can maintain it can control uh, that compared to spar right what it is saying and proven performance record right uh, which many tension lag platform now for 20 over years so they have been proof right their performance and we can do full integration uh, onto the platform which means rather than uh, onto the site like the top side we can integrate all modules uh, before installation of the uh, of the uh, top side hull but again where these are the advantages there are also some limitation of the platform so water depth payload limited right because uh, we have to maintain right so the buoyancy right because the weight which is self weight plus the payload buoyancy so weight uh, will uh, in this area so the weight will increase so maybe uh, the buoyancy balance because it is buoyant platform so we cannot lose the buoyancy so we have to limit the payload right so we have to make sure w should always be less than equal to buoyancy so mostly uh, less than buoyancy so this is the payload right so this is the payload limitation so we cannot uh, go for very heavy top side facility cost of tendon system is uh, sometime higher vertical mooring system does not provide active control of horizontal position so it is like a, a vertical thing so one thing this frequency right it is the, just like a guitar wire you touch the wire so it can vibrate right fast right so the horizontal movement will be it's just like a guitar wire so like as we say uh, this is the wave frequency so the tlp will be falling somewhere here right it will be uh, root, uh, vibrating faster than the wave right 
so TLP is uh, very effective once installed, right? However, the tendon system is critical to performance and must be carefully designed, fabricated, inspected, and installed to ensure long-term performance and robustness. Tendon installation requires specialized equipment and careful execution. Right. So this, as I have explained, right. So because this is like a vertical string, right, tighten string, so it can easily horizontally, right. The heaving is not right. So, uh, but this is the uh, the issue of over there, right. So uh, this is. Uh, uh, and this is another category, uh, sorry, here. So this is the, on this platform, so various uh, component like this uh, derrick, uh, so the drilling part is there, right? Drilling module where it is being located on this side, uh, quarter module, right? Uh, this is the well bay module, right? So uh, here, right? Uh, this is the power production and processing separation and all. So this is the production and drilling platform. It is the Mars platform, right? Which is tension leg. And these are red color are the hull column, right? Which is pontoon at the bottom. So these are so technical, the foundation is the link between the seafloor, as I said uh, previously, and the TLP. Most foundations are template rather than directly onto the pile, right? So uh, if let's say uh, this is the one plate and this corner, this corner, this corner this is at the seabed if i will cut the section so this plate so it is uh, being resting onto the uh, pile and the tendons at four corners maybe four four tendons are being uh, right uh, hook over there so that uh, it will be because not uneven, right? If you will take uh, this part, right? Separate this part, right? Like this, one corner here, one corner here, one corner, different template and directly. So there will be unevenness, right? So it is better take one full template, all four corners, and onto that template, right? So uh, th there will be uh, this one full template, right? So on this template, uh, this uh, uh, vertical tendons, maybe four or six at each corner, will be uh, fixed over there, and this will be connected to the pile for more vertical stability, right? So this is. So what it is being explaining over here, right? So uh, are the template laid on the seafloor, then secured by concrete or steel pile, driven into the seafloor by use of hydraulic hammer or something, right? Which by other design can be used such as gravity foundation, or we can put the heavy concrete base. The foundations are built on shore and towed to the side as many as 16 concrete piles with dimension 100 feet in diameter and 400 feet long are used, right, for one tendon, right? Because uh, this much what dimension is giving, for example, 16 pile, right, which is uh, below uh, this 16 pile.
so 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 let's say these are 16 so this is the in this while so there is this friction just now so this will be because uh, the force is upward force right so if this tendon is tend to come out so this piles right for one tendon so this will give the friction right due to soil which is uh, sorry soil which is function of diameter and length of the pile inside the soil so what it is saying it is roughly as many not that roughly this number of concrete pile of this dimension so for one tendon would be because this tendon uh, one side if let's say the whole platform right the whole platform uh, which is uh, uh, 20000 total load right then and you are talking about a buoyancy 24,000 ton, 24k ton, right? So le let's say you are having tent uh, four corner. So uh, uh, for example, 16 tendon, right? Or eight, uh, four, yeah, 16. So uh, 10, so which means uh, 24,000, so 1,500 ton each tendon will get maximum 1,500 ton of tension, right? 1,500 ton. So you need this friction, right? This friction because this 1,500 ton each so it will tend to come out, pull out, right, from there, this connection. The whole template, this tendon will tend to come out because this 1,500 ton force. So this 1,500 ton, if we are saying you are putting 15 pile, so the each pile will have the friction of 100 ton, right? So this 100 ton, is coming from the size and the diameter and length because the perimeter and the length of the pile so that is getting the friction with the surrounding soil right so that is the purpose of the uh, dimension and the number of pile right so we should have the more friction than the uh, applied tension or right then the available tension into the that right so the hull which i have explained uh, to you right and uh, technical description right which uh, uh, that the template and all which i have explained right so the installation again the first we can put the template for well or foundation then we can put the export pipeline flexible riser and mooring line platforms or tendons and hull and surface facilities right so this is uh, roughly the sequence of this so before i uh, move here again there is right rest of the things are the same and uh, there is also uh, one or two two i think uh, i have video maybe this one is better it is again animated video right as what it is showing the distance
yeah so these are the tendon at the template right which is at the bottom this so this is what installation is going on so these are the what we call tendon right uh, the tension wire right so these are so this is thick but uh, there will be a point they will be connected to each other right uh, so as uh, they are going deeper so they are connected over here right these are the marking how deep they have to go right so these are the specially uh, developed uh, barges right so now uh, these are vertically hold and then you see it is going down to be this So these are the pipes. So this hammering is being done. So see the piles has gone for tendon. So as we say, as many as 16 such piles. So this is the suction hammer. This is the hammer and this is the ROV, which is controlling. because we are bringing this tendon and pile in pieces and uh, on the barge we have to connect because it is maybe one kilometer deep so we have to connect on barge like that if it is tendon or if it is pile so everything we have to and even this is being fixed and make continuity. Right? So same thing it will be connecting so before the hull will come all these things as the process of construction 
is being explaining but i can now it is going to be uh, connected to the template this is the template at the top of the pile right so this is the tendon so there is no plate directly this may be the small so this the tendons you can see right all four corners these are the tendons you can see right the tension and these are some for maintaining because uh, some hung weight is hung and then the fully integrated right it is stowing down right they say the hull can be fully integrated right so it to right so now it has brought to the level this these are the column right so that uh, the ten tendon connections everything is coming to them and the riser so these are being connected to the tendon so the tendon is put pull up so tensioning of tendons right so this you see the tendon how they have been tensioned so rov is completely that right? when hull came it is being uh, fastening locking right so it should not so like this are the locking mechanism it is lifting this it is i think pipeline riser okay. this is riser riser is coming so this is all the uh, installation uh, in that way is being done right uh, so there is uh, so these are the tendons showing right so risers will go right? this is the retention like hull i think the other uh, also 5 minutes long tlp animation it is another platform it will be all like in norwegian 
right so this is showing the channel Right, so same similar things you can see, but for different platform. So I think similar thing. So uh, you can find uh, more uh, videos uh, on the YouTube to make uh, uh, your concept more clear, right? So just now we have seen a template or well uh, bay foundation, right? Export pipeline, flexible riser and mooring line platforms, tendon, hull, and surface facilities. So an example of process, the hull was built. Uh, there are also the uh, sometimes these projects, as we say, the project management and contracting, right? So this is also very critical, right? And the uh, shipyard. So there is uh, an example of the installation of surface facilities and hull for a Gulf of Mexico TLP, right? Uh, in last, I think, 2013-14, uh, right? Because the, uh, the uh, project uh, is very, very specialized. Not every uh, where, uh, shipyards can do the fabrication. And again, the facilities are not so the work is being distributed simultaneously so this is for again as for contracting right when uh, you are asset manager or project manager so the contracting of the uh, work execution also required most important thing and the feasibility and the schedule right so in order to meet the schedule on time so the hull 
uh, the platform was in Gulf of, Me of Mexico in Texas, right? But the hull was built in Taran, uh, Taranto, Italy, and dry transported. I have shown you to, in video that uh, uh, there are two transportation: the wet, which means the hull is stored by the tow boat, and uh, it can be uh, uh, is loaded out onto the barge, and the barge can be towed, right? Mm, the barge can flow. So uh, that the hull was built in Italy and it was loaded onto the barge. So which is the dry transportation, which uh, uh, was uh, uh, transported to 6,500 nautical mile to Corpus Christi, uh, Texas, right? And for that, um, a mighty servant to a heavy load vessel was used, right? For, for the transportation of this because these barges so they are they have also made the special barges for the transportation of heavy load right because over there and but and it was possible because this is across the atlantic right where the water depth is quite high so the navigational route is might not be the problem right so the full weight they can. So dry. Why they went for dry transportation? Because it took 22 days, right? Uh, when uh, they used this mighty servant too, which is a very heavy load. And uh, I think uh, for some of these jobs, they have upgraded and modified this kind of transportation vessel for transportation of that. Uh, because uh, this investment saved the time of transportation, right? Because it took 22 days, uh, which has saved 70 days if they can tow wet, which means they, have, as you have seen in the video, the the either the uh, uh, spar or tension leg hull were towing by using the tow boats. So if they can use four tow boats, so it might take three over months from Italy to the Texas, right? Uh, so uh, they have used this. So it has saved 70 days, right? 70 days are very important into the uh, co cost and control and construction schedule, right? For project management. So hull and deck modules were integrated. So that was only the hull, right? As we say, then uh, the hull was brought close to Texas in the Texas shipyard. And over there, the module, the platform modules were integrated, right? Again, not at the site, right? As an example, when hull so uh, was in fabrication in Italy at the same time, right? The uh, deck modules, which means the court, uh, living quarter and other, the, the platform module or top side module were fabricating in Texas, in uh, nearby to the site is Ingle side in Texas, right? So using a shore base, a specialized lifting device again for that was used to place the module so once the hull were uh, was uh, fabricated so it was transported to this right shipyard uh, where the uh, top side were fabricating and once it was reached there hull was unloaded and the top side were integrated at the top of the hull using this device, right? In a, a one of a kind land based twin boom lifting device built for this purpose, right? So, this for integration against for the uh, quick uh, work, quick progress. So, this was especially designed for this project. So, its lifting capacity was the 4000 short ton. Right? So this device can lift each module in a single bay 
up to 40,000, 4,000 uh, uh, ton, right? So each lift involved positioning the hull so that the module package barge could be positioned under the SLT to connect the lift rigging, right? So uh, th these are the some processes they have been used. So the package which lifted 150 meter because in the air, right, for lifting, right, again, as uh, onto the, what is happened? Right. So as I said, uh, so this is, uh, for example, hull is here, right? So it is in the water. So this is your shore lifting device, right? So you have to lift uh, this, uh, this is lifting this module, which may be up to 4,000 ton. So uh, another, this, so it has to lift it up, up to 150 feet. So this can be slide over to the hull, right? For integration. So the hull can be lifted. So they, because it looks, the keeping the elevation at this, right? The package was lifted 150 feet in the air. This took three hours and then hull was positioned under this. So package, when it come lifted, hull came over there and it, it, because this module and it is integrated onto this. So the module weight was transferred to the hull. Then when it come closer and it was uh, hook. So uh, by doing so, because this is special device, it can do. So it took eight to 10 hour, 12 hours for this operation, right? So the platform is after all packages, all modules are placed onto the uh, hull. So then the hull is fully integrated with all top side module. And then the platform was stored from this shore base. So using the uh, barges, right? Three or four barges. So it was stored to the site where it was supposed to be there and connected to the tendon, right? So the platform, uh, uh, ocean going tugboats traveling at three miles per hour, right? That's why it take tugboats uh, sail very slow, right? So that's why from Italy, it was taking 92 days, right? For the 400 mile transport. So because, so 400 mile, three mile per hour, so uh, in one day, so uh, about, uh, because if not 100%, so 50, 60, so uh, about six, seven days it took, right, to transport the hull to the site. So because the installation took place, ensure there was no need for extra helicopter supply. So because all integration, so they have saved this money, right? So this is... Uh, just uh, an example of a case study of a project. How do we plan? How do you do the project planning and scheduling project management for the uh, construction and installation of the project, right? So uh, this is the uh, tension leg platform, right? So... Uh, the next part is uh, today, basic, uh, maybe the uh, last I will discuss then uh, uh, the uh, FPSO, which is more comprehensive, I will discuss tomorrow. So semi-submersible, uh, more or less, as you can see, the hull is similar to tension lake platform. Like these are the, this is the hull, this is the uh, column, these are the pontoon. It is catamaran type two pontoon, or there may be four pontoon. So we can have the ring pontoon or catamaran pontoon. Uh, these are the columns, and this is the upper uh, beam at which the 
attacks are being uh, resting, right? So the difference between tension lake platform, because hull is the same, tension lake platform are the vertical mooring top tension, and it is being connected by the loose catenary mooring, right? So loose catenary mooring, meaning to say, this is the hull and mooring is like this, right? And it is loose, right? But by doing so, uh, there are also some advantages. So the hull is uh, more or less same as PLP, right? So this is the difference. Mooring is the difference, right? So as we say, a semi-submersible uh, uh, is the submerged ship, is a specialized marine vessel which lacks pontoons for the buoyancy to float and way to keep the structure upright right uh, because of the semi submersible so buoyancy is the one which keep it afloat so number of if specific offshore role as offshore drilling rigs right only for that heavy lift crane oil production platform and safety vessel so they are designed with good stability and sea keeping characteristics So uh, as you can see, this is the two pontoon catamaran type, and this is the ring pontoon, all four side, right? So semi-submersible are a common type of floating structure used in the exploration and production of a hydrocarbon. These structure often comprise two submerged horizontal pontoon, which is like this, which provide the uh, uh, mere buoyancy for the platform because these pontoons uh, are uh, sometimes filled with the uh, uh, foam which is lighter weight lighter than water so they, these can also be used for adding the buoyancy right because the inside volume of this pontoon can be used for adding the buoyancy right So when moving location at low draft, right? Because particularly why we can use this, uh, as we say, uh, uh, we have to uh, sailing, right? Uh, using tugboat. So uh, it not at the final location, but from shore base, whenever you are moving, right? Let's say this is the shore base where uh, they are being fabricated so if we can look the here is so the draft is very low right the water depth may be somewhere right so let's say water depth is 10 meter and we need a draft so so what we do so we cannot get the uh, buoyancy due to uh, required draft available due to water depth so we can fill this buoyancy fluid, right? Because just like why balloon, right? Why balloon move up, right? So the air which is filled inside the balloon is lighter than the outer air, right? So that's why they have to fly up, right? So same thing, anything you fill, right? Lighter than water because this volume is filled with uh, something which is lighter than water right so it will the lighter material will tend to go up right so that will uh, create the buoyancy so sometimes if we are traveling right in the low draft area we cannot achieve the required draft for the uh, floating so we have to fill with buoyancy fluid or uh, if 
uh, this is the issue so otherwise we can go for ring pontoon may be used for a fixed location so normally they are used for exploratory and production purposes both floating structure towed to the side ballasted and more large vertical column connected to large pontoon legs column supports deck structure and equipment more or less similar water depth uh, they have been used from 200 meter to 3000 meter water depth right offer large deck spaces because the semi submersible so we have to increase the area right so because of that you will extend the area and volume of the structure so because you need large uh, replaced uh, volume of water right so that is providing the large deck space so you can house so many activity exceptional stability and sea keep keeping characteristic right withstand rough weather water right highly flexible and efficient and can be moved from place to place right when uh, for example uh, the site is completed uh, or 10 years after 10 years you can relocate to an other location Uh, so this rig is same principle as uh, other submersible rigs, right? So it's stable in rough. So this is uh, uh, one of the uh, semi-submersible, which is being towing. These are the tow boats, right? It is towing onto the location, right? So the shore-based uh, uh, shipyard, it was fabricated and integrated there and now it is being towing right so are the most common type so they are self-propelled or thrusted uh, thrust self-propelled but mostly uh, uh, for the platform uh, they are being told not the self uh, pro uh, propelled they are thruster assisted assisted using the tugboat uh, it, the first uh, uh, semi-sub, not only for deep water, but it was, uh, this uh, was first developed, right, for shallow water. Uh, 1960 prototype conversion, a semi, uh, this, uh, which is for uh, drilling rig, right, for drilling purpose, right. So it is bottle shape, uh, column deck on top carrying drilling system and crew quarter. Right, but it was uh, first built in uh, for shallow water, not for the deep water for drilling per platform. So, why uh, uh, semi submersible comparison of motions between a ship shape body and semi submersible during a model test? This is a model test being done right in the wave uh, tank in the laboratory right so uh, uh, it is being proved that uh, a semi submersible during a model test to bring out the efficiency of semis in terms of motion so compared to because of this uh, the square shape so uh, in motions the roll and uh, uh, in roll and heaving they have performed much better platform so these are some uh, uh, component of the semi-submersible hull, which is more or less same as all other platforms which we have been uh, discussed, right? So because uh, in this way, uh, I have added the uh, design uh, development framework, uh, which is applicable to other as well, because all these things are more or less similar, right? So again, uh, you are having this component, right? So, so they are being used, uh, mobile offshore uh, drilling unit uh, for the pre-drilling, semi-submersible crane vessel, 
for these purposes, uh, they can also be used. So semi-submersible drilling units, based on the way the rig is submerged in the water, there are two main types, bottle type semi-sub and column stabilized, right? Bottle type, which means the bottle shape, right? Uh, this I have shown you here. This is the bottle shape column, right? Hull uh, below the drilling deck is bottle shape. Hull can be submerged by ballasting, which means adding water. Originally, bottle below the rig were completely submerged, resting on the ocean floor. As the time progressed, bottles were only partially submerged, offered exceptional stability for drilling operation. Column stabilized. A more popular these days design, particularly for the deep water, two horizontal hull are connected via cylindrical or rectangular column to the drilling deck above the water. A smaller diagonal column can also be used to support the structure. Right? The smaller diagonal column to support the structure, meaning to say, uh, if uh, uh, this is the plan. One, two, three, four column, let's say. So if I will take one column here, one column here, right? So this diagonal column, a small diagonal column between here to here, here to here, here to here, can also be used for increasing the stability, right? So the mooring lines and dynamic positioning help to keep the semi-sub dynamic positioning, which means mm, that there are some thruster added. Uh, if the uh, uh, stormy condition is this, so that can adjust the, uh, 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 the degree of freedom, for example, right? So if it is uh, angular motion, they can control the angular motion. So the, this is or it can tilt it here and there, which is as say self-propelled. Some so this is called the dynamic positioning, right? By assistant, not the pneumatic. So these are possible into the uh, semi-submersible. So this is some uh, statistics of semi-submersible, right? So as uh, see as shallow depth to the uh, very deep, right? Uh, which is uh, uh, like uh, three kilometer water depth, it has been installed. So for offshore uh, production platform, when oil fields were first developed in offshore location, drilling semi-submersible were converted for use as combined drilling and production. So uh, first they used as a drilling platform and afterwards when drilling completed, so the uh, semi-submersible were converted to the production platform. So as progressed to deeper water and harsh environment, purpose built. So later, now we are uh, making purpose built, custom made, tailor made production semis, right? But in early days, first, like in 1960s, 70s, right? So they were first developed or designed for drilling purpose. Once drilling completed, then they were converted to the uh, 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 production platform, right? So this is uh, a site development, right? Uh, for the uh, semi-submersible, right? It is like uh, the remote site. So these are the risers, right? So uh, which is carrying, right? So uh, uh, this is uh, the uh, the full scale, right? So as different color gas, right? Umbilical are the uh, when uh, I will show umbilical is a uh, hosing which is carrying all electrical wires or it is like a circular hose which is carrying various tubing for various supply, electrical, uh, fluid, right? So multi, it is called umbilical, right? Because 
for running subsea system right so this we have to so which one is the these are the umbilical right so spread mooring again because catenary loose mooring so the uh, footprint onto the floor right so this is semi sub so spread mooring so the this may be one or two kilometer the mooring on the sea floor will be like this so again the mooring is similar to spar right choosing depending on shape of unit and sea condition dynamic positioning using different motor of propulsion unit to counteract motion right because if the hull right is like it is tilting so there will be propulsion right so that can be control the dynamic positioning right so that is one of the advantage just like the ship right the ships or the boats right the propulsion using propulsion right or thruster we can control the positioning right uh, in uh, which is not uh, uh, available in tension lang and spar so normally it is being uh, guided by telemetry signal from beacons right because uh, like uh, the system is here right so the uh, beacon of boys so uh, they put the signal so uh, navigational signal right so this is some the those are the captains so the all navigational signal or uh, satellite information to control the angular movement of cable right so by that we can control so dynamically under the stormy conditions so the semi sub can be maintained to the safe position right safe dynamic position so this slide is giving some advantages and disadvantages semi sub can be achieve good small motion response and therefore can be more easily positioned over a well template for drilling most stable of any floating rig semi submersible allow for a large number of flexible liber right because it has the more flexibility so rather than tension flexible risers right so that's why uh, this is up so the riser are flexible right so it can go right because of the it can have the large offset margin right so the flexible mar risers can be used provide large deck area so more facilities transportation from location to location is easy can be reused and converted to other support vessel right and there are these disadvantages high initial and operating cost pipeline infrastructure or other mean is required to export produce oil right so you cannot store a building schedule for semi submersible are usually longer than jackup rigs limited deck load structure fatigue expensive to move large distances limited distances okay limited dry docking facilities available difficult to handle mooring system and riser in rough seas so these are some disadvantages so uh, as uh, compared to uh, last uh, uh, two types so we did not discuss so this is generic right the design development basic framework so it is not only for uh, semi right you can it can be applied for all semi right uh, tlp or spar right how we develop the design philosophy right because hull 
or DAC is more or less resembling to each other, particularly TLP and semi sub, right? So, uh, because uh, as I said, we are not designing but design stages, right? So, whenever we design, we need some data, right? And then we have to do some analysis. So, the design, the first, uh, the what are the requirements? So basic requirement, water depth, right? Variable deck load uh, level, right? So this is VDL, right? Some are the variable deck load, which is live load, right? In uh, general engineering, VDL is live load, right? Uh, which is the the uh, f there are two load fixed load because we need f payload right what is fifty thousand ton so the permanent load fixed load will be th seventy percent so we have the margin thirty percent of variable deck load right so it is also very important because fixed load will remain fixed but variable which is depending you are storing the thing right so the maximum margin is important for the safety right so the stability is checked upon the variable right so overall capacity and so on so this is the basic requirement for which right you are handling based on that right so this is the basic data and this is the natural data this is your requirement this is data wind of the area wave current if ice so or other like temperature other data right so these two are the uh, pre-engineering decisions right because what is the capacity and so on so forth right so after that uh, this requirement, right, and this will support over here. So initial sizing, right, we are doing stability. Again, hydrostatic where we will be discussing some, all these things at different roll angle, right, this theta roll angle, uh, this chart with chapter three we have discussed, and overturning moment, and this stability, position of M, right, uh, G and uh, B, right, uh, center of buoyancy. So all these under different angle, right, so we can discuss all the under all loading conditions, right, and we will uh, all uh, three, uh, all six linear movement, right, surge or sway or, or heel, heaving right even pitching rolling so in that uh, we will uh, do all the stability check so when we come up this is uh, the uh, primary sizing right initial sizing is okay right then we will go for finalize the hull size and then we will again go for finalize so we will do some uh, laboratory model testing and calculation stability model as I have shown you somewhere here. Like this, right? So this is, uh, we will take because initial sizing, finalized sizing, how do we do, right? Then uh, we can, uh, look the, we can create the uh, wave condition wind condition and in that we can physically model we can physically monitor the model right and we can uh, look right uh, uh, recalculate right the stability criteria right stability model testing and complying to the so all these analysis of the curve right which is loading evaluation stability curve in chapter two. Then 
uh, after this basic st static stability, we can go for this drag hydrodynamic stability under wind uh, thing motion. And once uh, we will get this answer, then we will go to detailed structural analysis where the material stand buckling, uh, fatigue stand, and the bending and all those things, right? Which so this is for example the three stages of design. So uh, we will this is the model, uh, this is the info requirement. So this is the database of the date uh, requirement and the environmental data. Then this is initial sizing. So basic. So we can use the software here. Then uh, finalize hull size where we do the laboratory model test and the uh, the software analysis and modify based on because through software analysis right or simulation whatever we are predicting we will verify the model if model is 70 80 percent correct 90 percent correct then we can modify and we can work after this static stability right then we will go to hydrodynamic, right? And after hydrodynamic, because this is the global response, then we can go each of the member design, right? Which is detailed structural analysis, right? The thickness and all those things, material stand, bending moment, shear force, right? So this is stability, I think I've explained. So uh, you can go the stability, analysis how do this is some software right auto hydro program so you can we can give in that right you can study and this is the different the angular movement right so which is showing this angle green is showing the positive buoyancy and red position uh, the the software is showing the negative buoyancy right when it is tilted first so uh, that can fail. So uh, you are giving like the software, this uh, auto hydro software you are using. So you are giving the dimensions, main dimensions, right? So you are, we create this model, right? Initial sizing and this wind healing. So you are applying the wind mode. So you are calculating all those things, right? And this position and then you are looking at the damage dimension with this. So, so this is the safe. Green is the safe, right? In this style. So, if uh, this is not your requirement, you can change, right? So, allowable kg, the, the calculation, right? Which is in chapter three and loading conditions, then you go. So, these are some uh, detailed stability model where based on that, you can modify the dimension and section this is some example right and this is the curve which we have been discussed right so the load versus buoyancy right so we should have this writing moment which is returning moment right so this will be uh, always be uh, positive this should give the positive so this is the criteria, stable criteria, because with this, in this model, with this is the writing arm, right? So this uh, angle, right? Angle you, which you are giving versus this. So uh, we are discussing the wind. So this is the wind moment, right? This is the tilting moment with different angle, horizontal, right? So you are getting these three angles. Right, so it's from nine, zero degree to this. So area A, area B, area C. So the for a stable condition, right? From this software, right? What you are getting? So uh, A, B plus C. B plus C area should be greater than 1.3 A plus C area, uh, right? As this factor uh, in chapter three, we have discussed, right? So, as in this case, uh, G is below M, it is safe. So 
uh, our safe condition by the time m will come below g right so that is the uh, it will be showing uh, uh, this thing right this condition so it will be green by the time uh, g is uh, below m is right So uh, this is unsafe condition, right? So this is unstable, right? So that uh, the uh, this will cause the intact stability. So we don't want uh, this situation, right? So either in this case we say uh, at this angle if it is happening, so either we can control this by uh, increasing the size of the column right that's why in design development right we are looking stability model and we are uh, finalizing the size right we can increase or decrease the size right where we can uh, find we can have the this thing we can have this condition to be always happen right so this is this can be applicable this study uh, the stability analysis is applicable to all right whether uh, spar tension leg hull or the semi sub right so this that's why i include in here right so this is uh, draft versus uh, the kg from that curve right the kg distance k keel versus k is the lowest part and g is the uh, gra gravity right so uh, uh, these are the uh, curve for different and motion and air gap analysis so uh, this is the air gap how do so again uh, this is the uh, software flow chart right so and we can also do for detail structure design uh, design as the finite element right so this is some finite element and these are the time period right Na national heat period uh, so uh, for large we have calculated right so the time period as you can say right it is uh, more than the uh, the wave period normally so it is slowly right So these are some limitations given here. So this is uh, one uh, big semi which is towing, right? The semi hull is towing to the location. As you see, compared to other, the pontoon and the columns are uh, quite big, right? And the large area, right? For the semi submersible action. So this is uh, some uh, more slides. So this is from the shore base where it was fabricated right so then after fabrication so the water is released it is being towing right so this is coming there it is uh, floating production you know so the next is i think i will stop here but before i will stop so again i think one short uh, video right uh, uh, is there and then i think if i'm not mistaken it is this yeah Or test TL, TLP, sorry.
I think I don't uh, where is uh, this was uh, TLP oil okay I think uh, the semi sub I don't have uh, any video but uh, more or less same concept is there right so uh, I think it is going around 220 so for today uh, I think uh, we can stop over here right so any uh, question So because we are in well control, uh, so tomorrow most probably again, I think we better we can start 10.30 and by 2, 2.30 we can complete, uh, right? This slide and the uh, subsea and decommissioning, uh, I will, uh, two topics left. Uh, this I will discuss uh, uh, in uh, the third slot again, maybe the third slot uh, Saturday uh, uh, may be four hours and Sunday would be two hours. Six more hours uh, would be uh, good enough uh, for the uh, two slot. For uh, I think for uh, subsea, I have also uh, the recorded lecture by some uh, other professors as well, one hour long. Maybe I will also show that. So uh, with that, uh, it is uh, okay for today. Any question? Anything? Okay. So in the morning, you were, I think, five or six. So the other have left, right? So uh, is that okay? So tomorrow, again, we will start, inshallah, at 10.30. Is it fine? Because sometimes... Uh, tonight I have 8 to 10 another structural dynamic class for MSC offshore, right? So little bit uh, rest uh, because late night I will take the class so tomorrow that will be. So uh, with that, thank you very much, right? So I hope uh, it will be fine to you and uh, I try to make uh, your concept for the uh, deep water technology. As I said, it is not the specific course for the offshore design, but I'm trying to give you, right, some flavor for the uh, offshore engineering, for offshore structures, right? But uh, for more to be a specific a specialist, so of course, the full-fledged offshore engineering masters might be needed. Right? But if you are working as project management in offshore engineering, so these fundamentals give you some basics, right? So maybe uh, this subject uh, overview will give you some understanding on uh, the oil and gas offshore engineering. So with that, thank you very much. See you tomorrow.